Stone, and I'm Tier 3 at Glen Research Center. My project, or I'm helping my mentors out with FNIRS, which stands for Functional Near Infrared Spectroscopy. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota, and next year I'll be attending MIT. NASA stands for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. FNIRS is on the aeronautics side, particularly airplane safety. So what is FNIRS? FNIRS is a neuroimaging technique that basically measures cognition, specifically of pilots, which is what we're interested in, or else of skill acquisition. One of the ways we're measuring skill acquisition is through the video game GoldenEye for the N64. Now, it's a bit old, but it's very useful in that at the end of each mission, the data presented is good for quantifying learning. So who said NASA didn't like video games? But I'll let you hear some more about FNIRS from my mentor, Angela Haravel. We are monitoring the um, blood flow in the brain in different regions, and by using that data we can determine what cognitive state the pilot is in. And that's done through an emerging technology called functional near-infrared spectroscopy, and that uh, injects light into the brain, which then diffuses right through the skin, the skull, the fluid, through the top layer of the brain, and we detect it a few centimeters away, and we look for changes in the blood flow right in those uh, various locations. The goal is to help pilots make better decisions in order to ensure passenger safety. Also, unlike other neuroimaging techniques, FNIRS will not interfere with other metals or confine the user to a limited amount of space. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the time and the effort put in by NASA scientists and researchers. These men and women have contributed greatly to our technology and will continue doing so. Hi, my name is Alan Hilton. I have a master's in mathematics and now I'm a contractor at the NASA Glenn Research Center. Hi, I'm Angela Garibald and I work on functional near infrared spectroscopy or FNIRS and I'm a biomedical engineer in the bioscience and technology branch. So what do NASA insiders think of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics occupations, space, and NASA's future in the next 10 years? Most jobs, whether they're law or engineering, involve problem solving in one way or another. So if people are attracted to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, then they can go look for a STEM job to use those utilities to solve problems. It's always rewarding when you work at something and you dedicate your time and effort and energy to it and then you come up with a solution. Sometimes you surprise yourself. You could have an easy job where you just perform all day and or you can have something that really challenges you and makes you think in a new way and makes yourself a problem. Current plan is to go back to the moon and head on to Mars. Ten years from now we're going to be still working on solving the problems that we need to solve in order to spend more time on the moon and more time on Mars than we have in the past. And you know, people are talking about exploring asteroids. And NASA will also, I'm sure, still be doing a lot of aeronautics research and uh, trying to make the, uh, the airways safer. I see a lot of cool stuff happening at NASA. In the